Today we're making pasta alla norma. This is one of the best summer pasta dishes you will ever have. Here are all the ingredients. Let's get into it right now. This is such a great dish. I always like to go over the ingredients for you before we start. So here they all are for this dish. I'm gonna talk about eggplant first. So this eggplant is okay. It had a moderate amount of seeds. All eggplant has seeds. You try to do a little bit to help yourself. How do you find eggplant that doesn't have a lot of seeds and is good? You want to have eggplant that is shiny in the store. Kind of like that. You want it to be relatively hard. Now this one's okay, it's not the best. Do the best you can selecting them. Look for shiny, look for firm, and pray. Pray that there's not that many seeds. And if there are a lot of seeds, it's not gonna be the worst thing in the world. Most of the seeds are gonna be down here at the bottom of the eggplant. So if you were to get a few, buy a few extra than the recipe calls for, you can really just use most of the top parts and then you should be okay. Is it true that the larger the eggplant, the more seeds it will have? Yes. So like when I grow the eggplants, I don't let them grow to massive. I'll right. pick them a little earlier. So I have plum tomatoes here. This is 28 ounces of plum tomatoes. These are San Marzano. I crushed them. You don't need San Marzano. You could use crushed tomatoes. Any quality brand would be fine. We're gonna use three ounces of tomato paste in this recipe as well. We're going to use regatta salata to finish it. That's the cheese that's always used on pasta alla norma. If you can't find it though, use Pecorino Romano. Pecorino Romano is a great substitute often when you're looking for a cheese that, that can pass. This is a sheep's milk, salted regatta. It's kind of hard. It will be able to shred nice. I have a little bit of basil here. We'll go pick more in a minute from the garden, but this we'll just put in the sauce. Five cloves of garlic that are sliced. I have olive oil and I have extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna use regular olive oil to fry the eggplant. And guys, you can do this in the oven to the eggplant. Bunch of olive oil, salt and pepper, roasted in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes, but it's, the, the dish traditionally is, is fried and it comes out a little better when you fry them. And then the pasta here, I have tara, how do you say it? Pakari. Yes, I, I love the pasta. This is it's like a bigger rigatoni. So right there, it has ridges. I like the ridge one so the sauce will grab. If you can't find that, you can use regular rigatoni, which I have here, or mezze rigatoni, which is the small one. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna fry up the eggplant. I was thinking, I haven't used a large pan in a long time, like the big 14 inch stainless. You guys can definitely use that, but this one's good too, because this is gonna allow us to get the sauce in here too. So this is like a four quart nonstick, but this nonstick works, it'll, it'll fry the eggplant nicely. Let's heat this pan up to about medium heat. So I'm using regular olive oil here and Recipe calls for three quarter cup of olive oil. You don't have to be exact here, but just get enough olive oil in your pan. So let's let this heat up before we put the eggplant in here. I didn't even get into the salting of the eggplant. I'm not gonna salt them for this dish. I do it for eggplant parm always. It takes the water out more than the bitterness. But for this, because these pieces are relatively small, we should be okay just frying them. So I'm gonna do half batch. It's gonna take two batches. So I just dried these off. Like I put paper towels on them and dried them off. Let's get them in. You can test one right away. Okay, it's making a noise. It's good. So just do it away from you so it doesn't go all over your beautiful shirt. This is a nonstick. So what's happening is the heat, because it's in here, it's pushing the middle of it up and all the oil's running to the side. We'll just have to make do, you know, but I think we'll be all right. So I'm just trying to get everything on the flat side of it and then I'll just leave it for a bit. It's gonna suck up a lot of oil, then it will release it back as it cooks. And for the next batch, if we have to use a little bit more oil, we will. If you don't wanna deal with the frying, you don't wanna do any of this, which I don't blame you if you don't, you can toss these in olive oil, probably about a half a cup, three quarter cup, about 20, to 25 minutes at about 400 degrees in the oven, give or take. All right, so I'm just gonna try to flip them all, get them coated in that oil. But you don't wanna crowd them. If you crowd them, they're not gonna get brown and you wanna get them pretty brown. So these are done, I'm gonna pull them out. You can actually see all the oil's back in the pan now. So they absorb it all. There's nothing in the pan. Then they release it again. Okay, so let's get them all out of here. We have enough oil in there now. So I'm just gonna give this batch, next batch, a coat. Try to remove as much liquid with paper towels and then just get them all in there again. Do it away from you so it doesn't bounce on you. You could try to initially get them coated with some oil and then just spread them out. And then this batch, while it's still hot, salt them. That's when they'll really absorb it. 
We're gonna do this and then move on to the sauce. Now is a great time for me to tell you about my recent experience with Rosetta Stone. We're partnering with them for today's video and they're helping me learn Italian. We'd love to visit Italy soon, so there is no better time to start learning the language. I took French for four years in high school and I can't say a sentence, let alone have a conversation. So I was very skeptical about learning another language. But Rosetta Stone's approach to learning is different. They use voice recognition software, which allows you to learn a language in a more natural way through pictures and audio from native speakers. They prepare you for real life conversations and teach you phrases that can be used in everyday life. Lei come si chiama? Le come si chiama. And their pronunciation engine helps learners nail their accent, which if you watch this channel, is something that you know I struggle with just a bit. What I love most is that I can learn at my own pace. The lessons can be as short as 10 minutes, and I could do it anywhere. Usually, a subscription would cost $299. However, for a limited time, Rosetta Stone has an exclusive offer for my followers of 50% off their lifetime subscription. For $149.50, you can access 20 plus languages like Mandarin or Irish for your entire life. No need to squeeze learning into a few weeks. And there are never any renewal fees. Use my link in the description to get 50% off and thank you Rosetta Stone. So all the eggplants done. We used olive oil in here. You can wipe it down a little bit to take some out. So I'm gonna put a couple more tablespoons down. I backed the heat off probably like a four out of 10, maybe a little bit less than medium. So that's the five cloves of sliced garlic. And I also have anchovy. Now, the print recipe has the anchovies in it. You don't have to do this. I have two anchovy fillets. I'm just gonna put them in there. So, you know, we're making a Sicilian dish a lot of times, especially I believe if you go to Sicily, it's gonna be done this way versus a lot of the Americanized dishes won't have it. Anchovies are is such a great ingredient. Don't be afraid of them. I use them all the time. I probably use them too much. It's only been about a minute. Our pan is pretty hot, so the anchovy is gonna evaporate into nothing, which you're seeing here. You can take your spoon and just try to try to coax it along more. And then that's our garlic, how it looks. So, you know, just a little bit of white color on there. The whole process here is gonna take about a minute or two, guys. This is such an easy dish, as long as you can do the eggplant. So I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. If you don't like red pepper, if you don't like anything hot, just don't use it at all. Just gonna let that go into the oil. About 20 seconds, and now I have tomato paste. So I'm gonna use half a can, standard can is six ounces, so we're gonna put about three ounces in there, about that much. We're gonna fry this paste in here for a couple minutes. Between the paste and the anchovy, you're getting this really wonderful boost of flavor. If during this time you start to burn, lower your heat, and if that doesn't work, splash of water, just a splash. You will lower the temperature of the pan by like 75 degrees in a second. That's all you have to do. This is good, this is gone for a few minutes. Now we could put in our tomatoes. This is one 28 ounce can of those crushed uh, San Marzano plum tomatoes, but you don't have to use San Marzano. Use any quality brand. So I'm gonna put a little bit of basil in now. I'm just gonna leave the stem on and everything here. Put it in there, it's gonna help flavor this sauce up. We're gonna let this simmer. We're gonna cook our pasta. It's all gonna, time's gonna be good. While we're simmering it, let's uh, go get some really good basil from the garden outside. That other basil that I just put in there was from two days ago. So I like to just have the really, really fresh, good stuff for this dish right at the end. It makes it great. My water's boiling. I'm gonna cook it till it's al dente, maybe one minute less. Now it's finally simmering. And you wanna bring it to a simmer so you can remove a little bit of the excess moisture from, from these tomatoes. Oh, the smell though is just incredible. We didn't add any uh, salt into this. Each brand will be a little different sodium level. We actually went over that in that San Marzano versus domestic American tomatoes. The domestic ones had like 10 times the amount of salt. All right, so I'm doing about, it was like a half a teaspoon there to start. And when we get our pasta in, we'll taste again to make sure everything is perfect. Pasta is like 45 seconds away from being done. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove that basil piece that two day old basil we put in. You already tasted the sauce. You can see the consistency now. This is perfect. It's like ready for pasta. So that's like exactly what we're looking for there. You can save a tiny bit of pasta water if you don't want to just pull it out with a pasta spider, just in case you need to thin it, but I don't think you're going to. All right, there's the beautiful pasta. I got the heat on about four out of 10. We're just gonna gently toss everything. You know, if you thought you had too much sauce there, you could remove it, but Typically that 28 ounce can and just a couple ounces of tomato paste is gonna be enough here. 
because even though it looks like maybe a little saucy here, you gotta add all that eggplant in, so you're adding more volume back in. Now you can save a lot of this eggplant and just put it on per dish, which is not a bad idea. So I'll do, I'll save some of that here. And then we'll just mix this up and plate this for Tara with the Brigata Salata. I got the beautiful basil. You can just, you can just take some leaves and you can just hand tear them. And when you have fresh basil, it won't turn black immediately when it hits the uh, heat. You could also use mint in this too, guys. Mint is great in it. That's very, uh, very Sicilian also. James isn't gonna be in too many in during the summer because he's at camp all day. So I'm rating this actually against pasta alla norma that I had in Sicily. Mm. Okay? Just letting you know. There might be one or two eggplant pieces that are a little hard. I did my best frying them. I did my best tasting a the bunch of them. Is perfect. This, see, you, you're a big fan of of the pancori, but I prefer messy rigatoni because it's smaller. You guys use any pasta you like. Well, I can't stop eating it. So I guess that's a good thing, right? I think it's delicious. I don't know if it's, can I take a taste of the cheese by itself? Yeah, yeah. We've purchased a few brands of this over the years. So it could be that this one's a little less, um, it's just very salty sheep's milk, you know, not aged for a long time. I almost wish you would have used more of like um, a box grater. Oh yeah, yeah. For that, rather than the pieces. Because I did I the like... strips because a lot of times in Sicily, they do it that way. Yeah, and I've yeah. seen it that way. Yeah. But for me, I'm not getting a whole lot of the cheese flavor. I feel like it would be a little bit better if you grated it. That yeah. way there's- Oh, I've seen pictures with it with it piled on top of mm -hmm. it too. So yeah. use as much as you like, guys. Yeah, I think the eggplant is cooked perfectly. And it's nice and soft and tender. It's got like, good cooked eggplant flavor. The pasta is is great. The sauce is good. I can taste the anchovy in this. So if you don't like anchovy, maybe don't use it. Or if yeah. you want to make it vegetarian, don't use the anchovy. But I love it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful homage to to Sicily. Yeah, thanks. I like your uh, purple uh, shirt. So what did it get? I'm going to give it a nine and a half. Oh. I'm going to take off a half point for I really appreciate that. the cheese situation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You.